The Hunt. You know the drill. Predator gets hungry. Predator hunts prey. Predator kills prey. Right. Wrong. Sometimes, the prey fights back. Team members fall down on the job. Major screw-ups abound. But the hunter who pays attention to all the disasters survives. Now, three top predators show us what it really takes to make the ultimate kill. Africa's fertile savanna is this lioness's hunting ground. She's the most successful hunter in the pride, an agile killer with incredible focus and an awesome track record. Her cubs may be the same one day, but right now, they have a one in five chance of survival. But she can better those odds by hunting efficiently. She has her hands full. The cubs have just started to eat meat and their appetites are growing. With the help of wind direction, the lioness can pinpoint the scent of her prey. Today, she follows her nose within a few yards of warthogs. More of a snack than a meal, but she's an opportunistic hunter, and they haven't picked up her scent yet. She's careful to stay downwind. She even pins her ears and lowers her head to appear smaller. She melts into the lion-colored grass, sneaking closer before unleashing for the sprint. The warthog has its back to her, so she's in a good position to charge. She can't keep up. Others from the pride try to help, but end up stumped watching from the sidelines. But not all is lost. A piglet gets separated from his mother. A nice snack for the cubs and the right size for them to practice on. But warthogs have guts. This little guy nips back. One moment of distraction and he makes a break for it. It's a fail. What happened? Is there anyone to blame for the blunder? First, the stalk. Lions are built for speed, not endurance. They can reach 37 miles per hour, but only for 300 feet. The goal is to stalk close enough to their target to launch a final sprint without being noticed. But the lioness ran out of cover into shorter grassland and her camouflage trick went to waste. The warthogs spotted her and got a jump start on their getaway. They may look too plump to hustle, but they can run an impressive 30 miles per hour, dashing out of the danger zone. They were way out of her range of 600 feet. The other lions were too confused to take action. The one warthog they did get excelled at nipping and weaving. Pretty good defense. The offense pulled off nothing but sloppy strategy and bad teamwork. With precious energy wasted on a failed hunt, they have to up the ante. If the adults don't eat, the cubs don't eat. They'll weaken and become the target of other predators. The lioness and her pride regroup. Buffalo. 
One of these horned beasts is a lot harder to capture than a warthog. But their hunger drives them forward. This time, the head huntress opts for a solo attempt. She doesn't want anyone ruining her plan. This allows her to get much closer. Strong, supple shoulders enable her to keep low and hold her head dead still during the approach. An adult buffalo is out of reach for a single lioness, but she's a strategist. A calf is well within her 600-foot strike range. The lioness's claws are retractable and kept sharp in a protective sheath. When she pounces on her prey, she releases one and a half inch claws and digs them into the flesh like hooks. The lioness closes in on the kill, but then the plan backfires. Every buffalo calf comes with a bodyguard, mother. And every lion fears her because buffaloes are the meanest herd of herbivores on the savanna. They're renowned lion killers. A 1,000 pound arch enemy. It's another fail. The lioness's target choice was perfect. She had good grass cover this time and was able to aggressively attack the back of the calf. The only thing she failed to predict was the wrath of the protective mother. And no amount of strategy or planning could have gotten her around this obstacle. No one messes with mother. The lioness knows the solo act was ambitious. She learns from the mistake and calls for backup. The hefty male would be a perfect accomplice, but he'd rather sit this one out, as male lions often do. The lioness knows he lacks the agility and stamina required for a sneaky ambush, but he makes up for it in bulk. He considers the invitation at 550 pounds, he's big enough to intimidate someone's mother. She's got the male support, and the hunt is on. There's no cover at all for the lions, so she goes at her target straight on. The male looks like he's not sure what to do, but the duo has a plan. She's slowly tiring the buffalo, and the weight of the male comes in handy now. This time, not just mother takes notice. The entire herd is ready for battle. The hunters skillfully take down the buffalo. The male is the muscle, which frees the female up to take the throat. The lioness's over two inch canine teeth are spaced perfectly to either slip between the vertebrae of the prey, severing the spinal cord, or like with this buffalo, wrap snugly around the prey's trachea, 
suffocating it to death. Their pile-on plan is working, and the buffalo is tiring. Over 700 pounds of lion is tough to shake off. The herd is not going to just stand by and watch. They're rallying their own troops. What's worse than a mad mother? Many mad mothers. The bond amongst herd members is strong. When one is down, the defense goes on the offense. The lions assess the risk. Big bulls weigh 1,500 pounds and have a massive block of horn called a boss that serves as a battering ram. The bigger the boss, the older and more intimidating the owner. The huntress gives up. She knows that the only dead animal to come out of this will be a cat. The male is hungry and holds on. But he can't deny the inevitable. It's another fail. The lions couldn't carry out an ambush on this open ground. So they opted for a direct chase to startle the herd. They successfully separated an individual. The male did an excellent job as the muscle. The lions knew a mother might step into the ring, but they didn't expect a full-on charge by the entire herd. The duo strategy was spot on, but in this round of an age-old game, the defense scored big through group intimidation. The pride is not living up to the lion's killer reputation. They failed three times in a row. They each need over 10 pounds of meat a day to drive their predatory system. And they're all hungry. And now they're getting desperate. And desperation breeds foolishness. They gang up on a Nile crocodile. 800 pounds of fresh meat, but covered in scales and a mouth of daggers. Nice try. They're lucky the croc didn't turn them into lunch. for four. They know they need a change of strategy. The first modification, pick on prey that doesn't fight back. Buffalo are not the only herbivores on the dinner menu. The wildebeest are migrating and they roll right into the lion's territory. These mothers aren't as big as buffalo mothers, and any experienced hunter knows this. It's fast food, literally. The lions must make their move now, before the herds move on. The huntress just needs to pick the right target. She falls back on her ambush tactic using cover to get close. She can sprint 37 miles per hour for 300 feet, which means she has five and a half seconds to reach her target. She's so hungry, she wants to pounce now. If she doesn't hold back, her ambush will backfire.
Suddenly, a second lioness startled a herd from the side. It's now or never to make the perfect hunt. The lioness waits patiently for the right moment. But a second hunter jumps the gun and attacks from the flank, scaring the herd. The first lioness bursts from cover. They isolate the target. While the females distract the wildebeest, the male moves in from behind. He's rehearsed this plan. This time, it works. Finally, they'll eat, and so will their cubs. What made this hunt so much more successful than the buffalo bust? First, the grass was taller, providing perfect cover for the ambush. Lions are fast sprinters, but not long distance runners. Getting close to the kill zone was key. That's the immediate area around the prey. A perceived boundary that a predator must cross unnoticed in order to outrun the prey. In this case, 90 feet from boundary to target. The first lioness bursts from cover. The next hunter jumped too soon. But in fact, her move drove the herd closer to the first hunter. After the lionesses tired the prey out, the male's unmatched weight and strength delivered the final blow. But the most important tactic may have been avoiding prey that fights back. Nothing like learning from losing. A wildebeest may be half the weight of a buffalo, but some dinner is better than none. A solo lioness has a one in five chance of making a kill. And a pride success rate rises to one in three. What separates the winners and losers is how they handle defeat. This pride has persisted, and now the cubs have a good chance of surviving. The last herds leave this pride's territory. Wildebeest follow the constantly moving rains and the fresh grass that erupts in its wake. But it's not always greener on the other side. Soon, they'll have to cross the dangerous Mara River and the predator that inhabits its waters. The Nile Crocodile. It's the largest crocodile in Africa. Reaching 20 feet and weighing over a ton, the crocodile is a sit-and-wait predator that unleashes epic speed seconds before a kill. It's less known for its epic mistakes. It's quiet on the river now, but the crocs know millions of wildebeest and thousands of zebra will soon have to cross it. Between migrations, they live off very little, sometimes just small fish and the fat stored in their tail. During the drier winter months, they've been living in estivation, where their metabolism almost grinds to a halt. But summer is here, and the 90-degree heat stirs their hunger. If they don't make at least one kill during the annual crossing, they won't survive another year. The wildebeest and zebra are still a ways off. But buffalo are arriving now. The crocs are dying for meat. female crocodile positions herself within three feet of the prey without detection. She's like a spy submarine. Eyes and ears exposed for surveillance while the rest of the body hides underwater. 
To the buffalo, she could be a floating log. But this log has teeth. It's a tug of war. What happens next defies the logic of the hunt. This is the croc's first taste of red meat in nine months. But the buffalo is not sticking around for lunch. It's a fail. What went wrong? She got within three feet of her target without incident by exposing only her eyes, ears, and nose. Binocular vision allowed her to judge the distance between her jaws and her prey. The vertical leap was fast. A quarter second to go 10 feet. The croc's grip is all it's got to make a kill. If it doesn't clamp its jaws down in the right spot, it'll lose its meal. Her biggest mistake was taking on a 1,500-pound animal. Nine months without a decent kill has forced the hunter to bite off more than she can chew. Luckily, more meat on the hoof approaches croc territory. Rain brings over one million wildebeest ever closer. They move in the relentless pursuit of fertile grasses. Every year, it's the same path. And every year, they end up here, the darkest part of their journey. They must cross to reach the food on the other side. But in doing so, they risk swimming head first into death. The adults have done this before. They know what's waiting. Thousands of lives will be lost at this crossing. But the majority will make it through. The crocs feel the movement of the approaching herd. Pressure sensors on their skin are more sensitive to vibrations than human fingertips. They take up their positions. It's each to his own, but everyone's got the same idea. The crossing begins with one brave plunge. Croc has chosen a position in the path of a zebra herd. She plans an interception. Zebras are surprisingly strong swimmers. She can't decide on which to attack. She's trampled. She turns downstream to a different mark. Wildebeest. Already a few crocs are lined up. The prey knows the danger. They boldly forge ahead. Not just toward their enemies, but over them. Their strategy is to use large numbers and herd perseverance to overwhelm their reptilian predators. It seems to work. Suddenly, a softer target appears. This foe has never crossed the Mara. Without experience or muscle, he's at his most vulnerable. It takes 30 seconds for a zebra to cross the Mara River. 
the most perilous few moments in the foal's life. The foal swims as fast as his hooves can take him to the other side. He heads directly into the trap. But this newbie dodges the jaws of our hungry croc, plus two others. So far, the big bonanza is a big fail for the croc. How did both the wildebeest and the zebra make it through the most powerful jaws on the planet? The wildebeest had momentum and adrenaline on their side. They moved toward the crocs, coming at them from the side, making the crocs position too awkward for a swift attack. Crocodile eyes are forward oriented. They had to move their heads to the side to see, and this slowed them down. And a hoof to the skull probably didn't help their concentration. The crocodiles were too slow to get their strategy in order. And the foal, probably pure luck. Even with the glut of the migration, these crocs have a tough life. And with every failed attempt, they're wasting more valuable energy. The croc is on a mission triggered by the fury of starvation. This time, she waits for an animal to drift away from the herd. The zebra has almost made it to the other side. He recovers from a dunk and is within inches of the bank. The croc can't get a good angle, so she moves downstream, letting the current push the prey towards her. Powerful muscles exert a bite force of 5,000 pounds, stronger than a T-Rex. Like a bear trap, the crocodile's cone-shaped teeth interlock around the prey's flesh. The crocodile can eat up to half its body weight in one sitting. That's a potential 450-pound meal. The clever design of the teeth is made for gripping, not chewing. It's a stalemate. The crocodile can't get a good grip, and the zebra can't get out of the river. A victory for the zebra. But for the croc, another epic fail. As holes in the croc strategy become apparent, we see it's got more vulnerability than meets the eye. The Great Crossing is the croc's last chance to bulk up until next year's migration. It's now or never. These are the herd's last stragglers. The croc is ravenous, but she can't let hunger cloud her precision. She weighs all the variables. The speed of the current. The direction of the zebra. The size of her target.
What did she finally do right? She isolated a young, inexperienced target. Like the previous attempt near the bank, she used the current to her advantage. Only this time, she positioned herself closer to the bank so she could push off of it and raise herself high enough to clamp down with a bite that simultaneously drove her victim under. Patience and planning saved precious energy for the final attack. It was the recipe for a flawless kill. This zebra will sustain her for months. The reputation of the croc is that of an impeccable killer. The reality is 50% of its hunts end in failure. Like the lion, it learns from its blunders and rebounds. As its kind has done for millions of years. The lucky survivors from the herds have made it through the Mara River. But now, they enter the territory of another hunter, the cheetah. This cat fills a niche on the savannah. While lions use pride tactics and crocodiles have strength, the cheetah's prized skill is speed. It's the fastest mammal on the planet. Getting from zero to 60 in three seconds. The cheetah's flexible spine and extended limbs allows it to cover 40 feet in one stride. And at full speed, the cat is actually airborne for most of its stride. Its flattened tail acts like the rudder of a boat and helps balance the cheetah's body as it runs. The cheetah may lose points for strength and weapons, but who needs them when you've got a Ferrari engine? A fast engine requires a lot of fuel, and if these brothers don't get a kill soon, they'll lose their best asset. Male cheetahs are collaborative cats. Once they reach adulthood, they often form long-term hunting coalitions made up of brothers. An adult zebra can weigh 850 pounds, eight times heavier than a cheetah. The cheetah's size and strength can't compare with this target. So good teamwork is crucial. Luckily, these zebras are distracted. Speed might just be enough today. The first brother starts the ride of his life. Cheetah brother number one has singled out his target. A zebra foal. The mother fends him off. Number two tries to pick up where his brother left off. He can only keep up this incredible speed for about 20 seconds. The foal outruns him. Double fail. The plan seemed like a good idea at the time.
The distracted zebras gave the brothers a chance to stalk in close. The dip in the savanna was the perfect place for brother number one to launch an attack. And the open ground allowed the cheetah to get to almost 70 miles an hour in three seconds flat. But he underestimated the mother's blocking skill. She successfully positioned herself between the cat and her foal twice. Brother number two picks up the sprint. But by then, the foal was way ahead. Zebra are slower than cheetahs. They can only reach 40 miles per hour but their stamina can keep them ahead of their pursuer. Whereas cheetahs can sprint for only 900 feet. At their top speed, cheetahs have just five seconds to snag their prey or the sprint goes to waste. And they don't eat. Cheetahs must eat at least every five days. They're cooperating now, but soon they may be competing for territory and females. Strength and defense of their territory may determine the outcome. The brothers come across a large herd of Thompson's gazelles. But quantity of the prey doesn't determine quality of the hunt. To a cheetah, sight is paramount. The eye has a sharp, wide-angle view, which can maintain focus at high speeds. The coalition plans an ambush from two angles. Brother number one starts the sprint. He chases the prey right into the path of brother number two. But it weaves its way out of the trap. The gazelle zigzags are an adaptive strategy that break the cheetah's speed. Another bust. How did they get it so wrong? The stock was a good start. The gazelle didn't immediately notice his approach. As planned, the gazelle ran towards the second hunter. But the prey's speedy sidestep out of a cheetah dead end caught the hunters by surprise. Cheetahs are fastest when running in a straight line, but they lose momentum when they're forced to turn. The longer the chase, the greater the chance of losing the kill. If their pace is broken, the cheetah's awesome speed amounts to nothing. One brother decides to ditch the other hoping for better odds going it alone. Group hunts are powerful, but more can go wrong. First things first, get close or get nothing at all. Short and precise, a perfect execution. What made this hunt work for the offense? A silent stalk. 
and a flawless chase put the cheetah's chances right up there. This time, it trailed the gazelle's sidesteps without error. But the clincher was when the cheetah tripped the gazelle. Cheetahs don't have the bulk and strength of their cousin cats, so they've come up with other ways of taking down prey, like swiping a hoof. A dramatic end to a dramatic hunt. He did it all on his own, which means he doesn't have to share his hard-won meal. While he's having a protein party for one, the other brothers are just barely hanging on. Perhaps they should try solo hunts as well. Instead, they double their forces. Two more males join in. They will not be upstaged by their renegade brother. With four attacking from different angles, they're banking on going to bed with full bellies tonight. A lone impala. Without a herd to help look out for predators, it's practically on the plate already. But the brothers are in for a ride. The first sprint gets him close. He covered 100 meters in seven seconds. That's over 60 miles an hour. Right on top of the prey at first. Reinforcements enter from the sides, some eagerly, others leisurely. Even under the strength of four cheetahs, the ram's still not giving in. Finally, the band of brothers triumphs. A good stranglehold ends the battle. What went right? A close stalk. Lightning chase. And powerful grip got them ahead. Then the closing in. The last two look lackadaisical, but in fact, they deployed their moves at calculated intervals, slowly and deliberately, to save energy for the critical moment. Whether solo or together, these cheetahs will do just fine, and when the females enter their territory, they'll be fit enough to prove it. Cheetahs procure a meal with one out of two attempts. That gives them the highest batting average of all Africa's big cats. The prey they get sustains them until the next time. The prey that gets away teaches them how to change their game. Because what is born of defeat is perseverance. And with it, survival. <laughs> <laughs>